Obesity and type 2 diabetes are a rapidly rising health crisis, affecting millions and leading to serious complications. Unfortunately, many are left navigating a maze of expensive treatments that often come with unwanted side effects, leaving them frustrated and in search of real solutions. Enter Retroride, the innovative peptide that is gaining attention in the world of metabolic health. This groundbreaking molecule works by targeting multiple pathways in the body to help control blood sugar and support weight loss effectively. But there's more. This powerful peptide is also showing promise at improving cardiovascular health and overall enhancing quality of life. Let's take a deep dive into the peptide Retroride where I'll be showing all my research and discoveries on this exciting new compound. Before I continue, I must say a disclaimer that I am not a doctor, that all the information in this video is for purely educational and entertainment reasons. For any medical advice you may want, please seek out a licensed professional. I am not a doctor, but please, by watching this video, you understand this is not medical advice. So what is Retroride? Retroride is a peptide that works on multiple hormone receptors to help influence blood sugar levels, appetite control, and overall weight management. It does this by helping increase the body's ability to burn more energy, so burn more calories, and as well, helping the body suppress its appetite. Additionally, Retroride is being researched for other reasons than just weight management, such as helping with the heart, and as well as a tool and aid in diabetes. And now I want to quickly break down the differences between semi-glutide, Tizer peptide, and Retroride because they are all fall into a similar category of being GLP-1s and over the past years we've seen them evolve which is pretty exciting to see how they first started and actually semi-glutide is actually not even the first GLP-1 but it's just very exciting to see how they evolved and I see there's a lot of confusion on comparing these different compounds. So in my head, I did the simplest way to break it down. First, semi-glutide, tizer peptide, and retroride all in a way work in a similar way. Semi-glutide just targets one receptor, the GLP receptors. Tizer peptide targets the GLP-1 receptor, like semi-glutide, and additionally, the GIP receptor. So instead of one receptor, like semi-glutide, it targets two receptors. And then retroride targets three receptors. So it targets the GLP-1 receptors and the GIP receptors, just like Tizer peptide, but additionally, it targets the GCCR receptor, all this may sound like a bunch of mumble jumble, don't worry, I'll explain it here in a bit. But quickly, semi-glutide targets one receptor, Tizer peptide targets two receptors, and Retroride targets three receptors. So many peptide researchers are thinking that Retroride is the most potent since it does target the most receptors that help with weight management and appetite control. So how does Retroride actually work? Well, Retroride targets three main categories of receptors in the body the GLP-1R receptors, the GIP receptors, and the GCCR receptors. And a quick summary of how each of these receptors work, in my head anyways, is the GLP-1 receptor focuses mostly on suppression of appetite by working on how fast food leaves the stomach and as well by working on the brain to tell your body you're full. The GIP receptors, which are the second group of receptors that this peptide work on, really focuses more on metabolic management, such as increasing metabolic rate and as well working on blood sugar management. And the GCCR receptor focuses more on the blood sugar management and as well as increasing the metabolic rate. So by retroride working on all three groups of receptors, this allows the body to have better blood sugar management, an increase in metabolic rate, additionally better control at appetite, because the brain will be saying that you're full. Additionally, food will be leaving the stomach slower. So as you can see how why this peptide is so powerful when it comes to weight management and even helping with diabetes. So what are the research benefits of Retroride? The main one being weight management, then blood sugar control, which is very important for weight management and also diabetes, which is another research benefit. It's actually helping aid in preventing diabetes and managing diabetes. You must understand this is all under research context. Another is helping improve lipid profiles or fat in the blood. In addition, there is some correlation to helping improve cardiovascular health or heart health. But as you can see, Retroride's main research benefit is weight management and blood sugar control. So what are the most common research side effects? And from research in the peptide community and just all the GLP ones since it's been out in history, the first one is tends to be some kind of stomach pain. And this is in multiple reasons. First, maybe 
the subject is not eating as well, GLP-1s do work on the stomach and some people have an adverse reaction such as nausea, vomiting, diarrhea. But from my experience, the biggest reason why I've seen subjects actually get stomach pain is just because they're not eating, which is another side effect, which is appetite suppression, which you're probably thinking, Matthew, you just said it's a benefit. So it's a benefit and a side effect because I've seen subjects not eating for days just because there was no hunger. And I usually saw that when the subjects were taking very high doses or if the subject was very sensitive to the peptide. Last side effect I've seen is low blood sugar or hypoglycemic, which this peptide actually does help with blood sugar management, but I've seen subjects sometimes combine it with other medication or other things where it's actually too much of low blood sugar and that is not good. Now let's go into the research dosing and cycling. And this peptide was kind of hard because it's a newer peptide, but the thing is it's still a GLP-1 and there's lots of history of using GLP-1s, but this one is more potent. But from my research, from studying Reddit forums and other articles, it seems a starting dose of two milligrams one time a week and then increasing in two milligram spurts if it's needed. So for example, if I did two milligrams my first week, and after that week, I'm like, I actually didn't notice anything. Maybe I stick with that two milligram dose or increase to four milligrams. And then after four milligrams, I'm like, hey, this is actually good for me, so I'll stick with four milligrams. Additionally, the other GLP-1s, semi-glutide and tizer peptide, they often did not increase a dose until after four weeks to give the body a full time to adjust. So again, maybe it's two milligrams for the first month, and you're like, actually, that didn't actually really affect me at all. Maybe I need four milligrams. But as you can see with peptides in general, a lot of it comes down to the individual response and many other things. But for me, I like to be more conservative and increase. Additionally, there's a more common theme that's happening in the biohacking realm of actually microdosing. So potentially just doing one milligram a week or even 500 micrograms a week, especially if someone is already very metabolically fit. So as you can see, it really depends on somebody if they're very, if someone's already metabolically fit, or let's say somebody has really intense diabetes. So it's hard to say, but again, as you can see, it's one time a week and increasing until effective dose is found. And if I'm confusing you, please join my academy. I'll be there to answer all your questions. Now here are some other peptides I would stack with Retroride. First would be semi-glutide, which you're probably thinking a GLP-1 with the GLP-1 I've actually seen some very positive results of actually stacking them together in the right ratios. And that's very important for anything that's more advanced as poison is in the dose. Next would be some kind of GHRH with a GHRP, which that's pretty much means a peptide that helps create growth hormone and a peptide that helps release growth hormone. So I'm thinking of like testosterone with ipirelin. Growth hormone is amazing for blood sugar control, weight management, and I think can overall complement this type of peptide. Next peptide would be AOD96 or 4, or FRAG176191. They're very similar, but these peptides specifically focus on fat metabolism. So I think it'd be very powerful to add with Retroride, which is actually a very common thing I see with semi-glutide and other GLP-1 peptides. Next peptide would be 5-amino-1-MQ. This peptide really focuses on helping increase NAD, which is very important for metabolic rates. So if you have a better metabolic rate, it's gonna be better for weight management and will really complement Retroride. And the last peptides, I want to throw in a TB500, BPC157, CMAX, and Selenc. It's just kind of a group of them. And the reason why is that all these peptides, I mean, they have many benefits, but I included them for the brain health benefits. Because actually, Alzheimer's can be related to blood sugar levels and diabetes. So I'm thinking if I had a subject that was actually getting Alzheimer's from the blood sugar and the diabetes, how retroactive could be very beneficial, and then adding in these brain health peptides could really help. So as you can see, it's really a variable dependent on what the main goal is. Now let's go to supplements I would stack with Retroride. First would be some kind of bitters, which are just a group of herbs and spices that actually help with blood sugar. So we have the peptides that help with that, and then as well adding in the natural stuff. So I think together it can be very powerful, especially doing bitters before meals and then doing the Retroride once a week. Next would be collagen peptides. Collagen peptides are one of my favorite proteins because it's very gentle. And the reason why I added this in is because a very common side effect I see is people not eating or getting enough nutrients because they're forgetting to eat. And protein is so, so important for metabolic health and to making sure you're feeling satiated. Next would be some kind of great multivitamin. Ideally, if you can get it done in the IV or an injection to get more potency. But again, another side effect I've seen is people just not getting or not eating, which is you need micronutrients. You need all those nutrients. So multivitamin can be a great way 
just to make sure you're not gonna cause any malnutrition to the body. Next would be a natural test booster, some kind of with herbs and organs, just to support testosterone, and testosterone, especially if you're a man, is critical for feeling good, looking good, and having high muscle mass and high, and high metabolism. And lastly, it would be some kind of NAD support, included thion support, especially NAD support, because this is crucial for metabolism, and also glutathione is amazing for detox in the body, but together they have a really good effect, and I think just all around, one of my new favorite supplements is just making sure I can increase my NAD and glutathione as much as possible. Now let's go into some of my favorite lifestyle tools I would add to Retro Ride. First would be fasting, intermittent fasting. I'm a big fan of fasting, especially if used correctly and I can cleanse the body, it can make eating less way easier. Next would be obviously working out, but especially corrective training. I'm a big fan of corrective training. I actually only do corrective training. It's an amazing way to build muscle, increase your mobility. It makes working out way more enjoyable and the longevity of it is way better. And then adding in blood flow restriction training to add the muscle mass to corrective training. That may be a little bit confusing, but you should look into it because it's amazing. Next would be some kind of hot cold therapy. I'm thinking sauna and ice bath. These are some amazing ways to really help with metabolic health, help with detoxing and can just overall add a lot to the body. And finally, light therapy. And I'm really focusing more on the mitochondrial health because if we have more powerful mitochondria, such as getting red light therapy, that'd be amazing for the metabolic health. And I'm thinking combining all of these with Retroride can lead to a very powerful punch. So what are the pros of Retroride? The first pro is that it works on three main categories of receptors, which as of this moment, from what I know, tends to be the strongest GLP-1. The second pro is that it's one time a week injection. And the last pro, from what I can see, it seems pretty potent. So what are the major cons of Retroride? The first con is that it's a fairly new peptide. We still don't know the long-term implications. And the second con is that it's a very potent peptide. So with anything that's potent, that can lead to more side effects if used incorrectly. So what is my overall opinion of Retroride? So personally, I have never really used GLP ones just because I never really had any need for it. Maybe when I'm older, but just from my experience of reading, researching, and looking at the peptide community, it seems pretty amazing. It's pretty cool how these peptides have been changing over time with like semi-glutide to Tizer peptide to now Retroride. So I just think that these tools are becoming more powerful. And I believe that many people who are suffering from obesity or metabolic diseases, these peptides can be very beneficial if used correctly combined with other lifestyle factors. And personally, if I was gonna use it, which right now I'm 28, I can see maybe my 30s or 40s if my metabolism slows down, I believe microdosing could be very beneficial, which actually a lot of my older friends use GLP-1s in a microdosing fashion because they don't need a full dose, but microdosing gives them just what they need. Well, anyways, guys, thank you for watching. If you want more and really to master peptides and just not peptides in general, just life and health in general, either check out my book or join my academy. It's called Regenerative Academy. I put a lot of work into it and every single day I'm adding to it. But anyways, thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share and stick around for future videos.